get these saggy things cleaned up a little bit and we're gonna go to the woods and work a little but i thought what i'd do this time is kind of show y'all the whole process start to finish you know getting the harness on them brushing them down whatnot because it's muddy right now i'm sure y'all probably got the same conditions and uh on these work animals mules or horses it don't matter you want to make sure you get all that mud off especially where this collar sits because if it don't that collar will sit there and rock and move and it can cause sore spots on their shoulders and you just don't want to do that so it's real important to get them clean you know not so much under their belly and all that but anywhere the harness sits you know you kind of want to you want to get all that mess off of them if you can but the main the main part is is uh up there around their collar where the collar sits you definitely want to get all that clean you know they've been out there laying in the mud and the hay and all that mess i guess if you had a nice barn to keep them in you might could keep some of that down uh i know people that's put blankets on them in years past and that helps a lot too but i just kind of want to take y'all through and show you what i do every day and I'm not going to draw it out. We're going to try to make the video no longer than it has to be. But the main thing is I want to get all this mud off of her. You know, where her bridle's going to sit. Because, you know, I want her to be comfortable. I want her to be comfortable while she's working. Because if she's not comfortable, she's just not going to give me, you know, everything I need. And the main thing is I don't want to sore her up. Because then that'll keep her from working for a week or two, you know, even. And we sure don't want that. So, take the time, clean the animals up. Now, y'all, there's about 50 different ways to do this harnessing. This is just the way I do it. always likes to get over there toward Kate. It helps her to put her bridle on from the left side, but she dresses from the right, so that's how we try to strive to do it. Come here. See how she wants to take her head over that way? be easy with my mules with my animals paired horses mules whatever i try to be easy with them especially with the bit you know putting that bit in their mouth and getting their bridle on because that can get them where they don't like to be fooled with and we don't want that she used to be a lot worse than she is now she's got a lot better this is alice here Some of you that might be height challenged or got really big mules or big horses this is a kind of a neat way you can get it up on there even if they're tall feet if you're harnessing from the right which is what i'm doing here put your harness on your left arm hold your hands with both hands you got to feed that harness up on your left arm like i got there like so grab your hands step back get a swinging motion Throw it up on top of her. When you get it up there, kind of rock everything. That'll drop all your lines on that side. I'm right up here, Marcy, where they can see what I'm doing in the front here. I'm getting her hands seated in the collar. <clears throat> and if you, some of you ladies, maybe some of you that's a little weaker, you can come right here. Put your shoulder into this collar. You can push with your shoulder and pull with your hand, your opposite hand, and get that hang strap fastened. It's important that you get that hang strap pretty tight. You don't want it just you know, hanging. And what I do is I start at the front and I go to the back. 
Like I said, everybody's going to do this a little bit different. And there's nothing wrong with that. If it works for you, you do what works for you. Still got my, my uh, sleigh bells on. I thought it was pretty cool, so I'm just going to leave them on there. You know? All right. Now that's ready to go. And we just pull our breaching down over our butt. You won't always remember to pull her tail out. Don't look like a newbie and leave her tail stuck in the britching. <laughs> You'll get made fun of. Okay, I wanna make sure all my straps is not twisted or nothing. That all looks pretty good. Now, we'll check these. All them straps are good. Now I'll go ahead and, I'll go ahead and hook my outside line. And pull my over check over. Now she's pretty near ready to go. Now we'll do cake. Same thing with cake, just on the opposite side. Now you don't want to get in a hurry doing this, you know. I found y'all that if you want your mules to be quiet and your horses to be quiet and calm, it's best for you to be that way too. See how she just shoved her head on in there? She knows what's up. And see, she's already got her head down for me. Cake's real good at this. And you'll get some that are just born this way. See how she puts her head down for me? It's real easy to get her ears through. She, she makes it real easy. And there's some of them that, like I say, some of them are just born this way. That, this is her. <laughs> She's always been good about this. Of course, when you're taking the harness off of her, she likes to put her head down too. <laughs> sometimes that's aggravating. She'll keep her head down too far sometimes. All right, so now I'm harnessing her from the left side. So I've got my harness fed up on my right arm. It always is opposite from the side you're on. If you're on the left side harnessing, Put it on your right arm. If you're on the right side harnessing, put it on your left arm. And what that'll do is that'll give you the advantage to stand here like this. And just swing it up over. And you can take them. Just rock your harness like that. That'll kind of let all you loose. Uh, look down there and you'll see. See my belly band and my core strap? That kind of lets it find its place. You get the hang. Put in her collar on the top. Then you will come under the bottom and look over on the other side. Get her hand in on the other side. Now, I'm stout enough that I can do mine just like this. But like I told you, there ain't nothing wrong if you ain't strong enough. Uh, some of you ladies, maybe some of you smaller guys, if you ain't strong enough, put your shoulder into it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Nobody's going to make fun of you for doing it that way. However, they will make fun of you if your hands come out. So, uh, now. My quarter straps. And then my belly band. Get your head up, Kate. See her putting her head down. Kinda, it kind of hurts me on getting her harness on. Of course, now sometimes these straps will get, they'll get kind of lopsided. And you have to fix them. Get over a little. Get over a little. Here, get over a little. A little bit. Whoa. All our straps out when they were a little twisted, we get it fixed up. Everything looks good there. Okay. So, let's go back around here. We'll go ahead and hook our outside line. Bring her head up with the hole check. Yeah. 
All right, now my outside line's already hooked on her. My outside line's hooked on her. Now, I'm gonna come right here. Pull my line out. So I got hers out. And pull that one out. And if y'all are interested in the way I store my lines, you can go back and watch that uh, harnessing video I made here a while back. And I kind of show that. Try not to take up too much of your time today. I always use one of these. That keeps her butts tied together so they don't come around, you know, fly around on you. That helps a lot. And then on my lines, Kate's, Kate's inside line goes over to Alice. Alice's inside line goes over to Kate. So you got left and right. Now this is something I've been trying here lately is these little short spreaders right here. Instead of running through the hame ring on the hames, I've been trying these short spreaders. Fellow, a friend of mine over in Dixon, Tennessee, or excuse me, Charlotte, Tennessee, Eric Hicks, was telling me about it one day and he said he thinks that you just get a a little bit lighter response on the lines you know it lets them move in and out like they need to a little bit better and a little bit you know better leverage because you're uh more of a straighter pull versus being you know coming up through here and then down it's more of a straighter pull so maybe you get a little more leverage so i've been trying it i just want to see how it works uh i at this point, I'm not going to say that it's a lot of difference. Uh, I do believe that they are able to kind of move in and out and whatnot a little more freer. And it might not be as hard on their mouth, maybe. But I'll get back with y'all on that. We'll do a separate video on these line spreaders later. Okay. I got my inside lines hooked. I got an outside line hooked. Let's see here. We've got an outside line hooked on her, so... That's something you always want to double check. And y'all want to show you something right quick. Here's a quick way you can double check your team lines. You know, one of these lines is longer. This line here, the one that goes across to Alice, is longer than the one, this one, that goes over to Kate. Because they've got to spread out, okay? <clears throat> the one that's on the buckle here, see right here? See how it's on the buckle? The one that is on the buckle is the one that goes across to Alice. Now, you won't believe the number of people I've seen have these lines backwards. So, one quick way of doing it is looking at your buckle and your line. And is it coming across to Alice? Okay. Is that buckle there? It's coming across to Kate. Yes. Here's another way. Look at your line that you got in your hand, which would be this one. It needs to run straight through that buckle and right around to Alice's outside. That'll be your outside line, the one you're holding in your hand will go straight through the buckle and to the outside. Same thing with Alice's line. The one you hold in your hand will be the one that goes through the buckle and over here. Now the one that is on the buckle goes over to the other mule. All right, so maybe that makes sense. That's just a quick safety thing. Before you take off and you pick up your lines, you can pull your lines a little snug and look at them and say, okay, my lines is right. So you wanna have your lines hooked, especially if your team ain't real good broke. Okay, so everything looks pretty good. I believe we're ready to go. Now, what I like to do, come right around here, Marcy, where they can see. On these mules, I like to use chain for lead ropes because a mule is bad about gnawing on your lead ropes. Everybody says, why do you need that big old gawky chain for, well, <laughs> when you buy enough lead ropes, because your mules have done chewed them in two, you'll figure out why I got these chains. All right. And some of them are worse about it than others. But my chain just kind of stores right there. And then that way, when I get to the woods, if I need it, I'll have it. All right. So I'm not going to show you all that on the other side. Same thing with Alice. I just put her chain right there and everything's good to go. All right, guys. So thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit on getting a harness on a pair of mules. Uh, like I said, y'all, there's 50 different ways of doing it. So if you've got a little different way of harnessing your mule and it works for you, by all means, do it. And I just want to remind y'all to have a great day. Have a great weekend. Happy New Year to everybody. And I'm going to have some more single training videos coming out on Kate and Alice both. I'm going to be working on both of them, Kate and Alice. And we're going to be doing some one-line driving with both of them, single. Uh, Kate has already broke the one line. Alice is not. 
So I'm going to go ahead and get her started under one line. And I'll have some videos of that to share with y'all here in the next couple days. So y'all stay tuned. Thanks for watching and y'all have a good one. Thank you.